What is up guys, it's your boy Dashy. We are back again with another episode of Track Guides, and today we are gonna be checking out Dragon Mines. Now, as per usual, I do wanna say, if I talk about something in this video, such as holding fire, sacred fire, or you turning and you guys don't understand it, feel free to go back to the first episode in the series on Crash Cove, where I talk about those techniques and how to do them. Without further ado, let's actually talk a little bit about Dragon Mines' notoriety in beating the Oxide Ghost. So, Dragon Mines, the hardest track to beat the Oxide Ghost for, the bane of everybody's existence, the one track where if it gets voted online, you can expect the entire lobby to just explode in disband. Right. Now, the thing about the Oxide Ghost on this track is, honestly, it's pretty lenient. Oxide actually hits the wall and loses fire every single lap as he goes through the spiral and he doesn't even take the minecart shortcut. So there's actually plenty of room for error for you to be able to beat this ghost. However, a lot of people struggle with it. So what I'm gonna be doing is actually I'm gonna be showing three different time trials here. One of them is going to show with the minecart cut if you wanna try to learn that. The other one is going to show without it and instead doing the spiral. And then the third one is just going to show how much leeway you really have to be able to beat this oxide ghost and how much like extra little free time you have if you mess up. So let's get started with the first time trial with the minecart cut. So we're going to start off and we're going to do our start boost, do a single slide, and then jump and get a hang time boost. After that, we're gonna transition immediately into a power slide to the right and do three boosts. Then we're gonna go to the left, we're gonna jump into the water and then jump out of it to avoid slowing down too much. We're gonna power slide a little bit and go a little bit wide for us to be able to make this line into the shortcut. And then we're gonna jump through the shortcut in order to lose the least amount of speed. Now, as we're coming up to this boost pad, I actually want to pause. Now, in the original game, every boost pad that you hit gave you about the same amount of reserves. And they also seem to give you a little bit more reserves than in this game. What that basically meant is you could basically not have fire at all and you could run over that boost pad and start a power slide on it. And as long as you did boosts after the fact and started your slide on it, you'd be able to hold that fire. However, that's not really the case for this game. In this game, there's some boost pads where if you don't have two boosts or three, or, you know, orange fire or yellow fire, before you hit that pad, there's basically no way you're gonna be able to keep it. And some pads, it doesn't matter if you have fire at all, before you go over them and you should still be able to keep it. This pad in particular is probably one of the most unforgiving pads in the game right next to Papu's Pyramid. If you don't have at least two boosts going into this one, you're not gonna be able to hold this fire. Preferably you should have three. So you should have what I refer to as yellow fire, which is when you do three perfect boosts. You can get away with two again, but three is preferable. Otherwise, you're basically gonna hit this boost pad and it's gonna run out on you by the time you hit this left corner coming up. Now, the only reason I really wanna point this out is because mostly I just feel like people might not actually recognize when they lose fire or whatever, and they might not know how to hold fire through this area. And this is the only boost pad on the track for you to be able to get fire. So the main takeaway here is obviously do a couple boosts before this pad so you can hold this fire. And again, the reserves in the beginning section of this track are kind of tight. So we're going to move forward from there knowing this information. So we're going to do a slide to the left if we haven't already, and we're going to do some mini turbos and then jump into this coal. If you get a hang time turbo off that jump, you can actually just jump through the coal. But if you don't, then I would highly suggest just power sliding through it in order to maintain reserves. From there, we're just kind of following the same idea. We're going to be just cutting the lines as close as possible, and we're going to be holding fire and jumping through the shortcut. Again, as we hit the end of the shortcut, we're actually going to be doing a short little U-turn to the left in the midair, and then we're going to again hit the boost pad again to get some more reserves, and then just follow the same exact line again. Uh, as you can see, I do a little jump at the start of the track. It doesn't really matter that much, but again, we're just cutting our lines as close as possible while maintaining fire uh, by doing those perfect mini turbos, and then we do a short little U-turn into the shortcut and a short little U-turn out of it. If you want, you can actually play it way safer on the exit of the shortcut if you end up losing fire on the shortcut or if you just lose a ton of speed, and you can kind of go a little bit further down after that little ledge and uh, just U-turn onto it. And even better, you 
yet as of kind of recent, if you do fall off as you're jumping back onto the track from the, the shortcut, it will actually set you back down on the track at the top of the spiral, so you don't lose nearly as much time as you did before. And that concludes the run with the minecart shortcut. Again, I posted a 120. This is like just a dry run that I just picked up a controller and started up the PS4 and did. And the reason I did it that way is, of course, I wanted to show the controller inputs because I think a lot of people would like to see what exactly is going on, especially for this track. So after that, we're going to go over how to do this track without that shortcut if you don't really want to learn it and instead you just want to try to do the spiral. Now we're going to start off the time trial in basically the exact same fashion, obviously because the line isn't really going to change. So we are just going to get our yellow fire as soon as possible and then try to maintain it as we're going through this area. As you can see, Oxide also doesn't get yellow fire until a little bit later, so you do get a little edge on him in the beginning. So we're going to start our U-turn right there. Basically, already pointing in the direction that we want to be facing, and then start our U-turning from there to make sure that we really don't hit that wall. It's also a lot easier since we don't have Sacred Fire yet, and we're going to be going a little bit slower, so it's easier to control. So from there, it's pretty much the same idea. We're going to be maintaining our Sacred Fire through this area, and as we come up to lap 2, make sure to dodge that minecart. And then, same prospect, you basically face the direction you want to go, and then you jump off to the right a little bit. And you're just going to be hopping through that whole section while holding down square and down in my opinion the spiral is kind of harder than taking the shortcut itself if you ask me uh it's not super hard as you can see because this is pretty much the first time i've ever really done a run with three of the spiral instead of ever taking the minecart cut but in general, a lot of people think it's easier because they don't have to deal with the minecart cycles, and that's understandable. But as you can see, you do actually lose a little bit of time in running the spiral rather than doing the minecart shortcut. You lose about a second and a half to two seconds, somewhere in there. So it is fast to, to do the minecart, but some people might find it a little bit hard, and there's also a certain cycle that you have to hit to be able to do it. I'm going to be showing this extra time trial to kind of show you how much room you have for error you'll still be able to beat this Oxide Ghost. That's really all I want to say, just keep an eye on this part of the video, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about some other stuff during this section. Now, one question that I hear a lot is, what driving style should I use for this track, or X track in general, if I want to be able to beat the Oxide time? And one thing that I think needs to be said is, well, Speed is the fastest, it's the class that'll always get you the best time if you can handle it. But if you can't handle it, it's not really actually going to be the best class for you. What I mean by this is, well, if you can't make the lines work and you keep on bumping into the wall, or if you take really, really wide lines, as speed, then it's not really actually going to be better for you if you can actually make those lines work for like Excel or really any other class. Personally, you're going to be seeing me using acceleration for all of these time trials in this series because, well, it's what I'm more comfortable with. I've learned some tracks with speed, but I'm really just too apathetic to put the effort into it. If I wanted to learn speed, it would actually be better overall and I could post better times. But again, this really just kind of goes to show how much room for error that you really have and that you don't have to use the best class available to beat these times no matter what. So again, as you saw, we did the loop like multiple times and we're still able to beat the Oxide Ghost by a decent margin. That's really all I wanted to say about the Oxide Ghost. If you guys really have more questions, do feel free to ask in the comments below. Again, I showed the, the controller on screen and did my best to kind of explain the inner workings of the game to help you kind of get a feel for what you could do to probably improve your times a little bit, but from here we're going to move on to the Ring Rally section of this video. Now, Dragon Mind's Ring Rally really had me kind of banging my head against the wall, not gonna lie. So we're gonna start off the track and it plays kind of similar to the time trial portion of it. It does go a little bit wider, but it's the same principle. Once we hit the minecart section, you're presented with a choice. Now, you can go on the minecart section, which has, I think, two rings, it might be three, or you can go on the spiral section, which has six. Now, if you take the minecart, you can actually kind of spin it and get one of the rings off of the spiral section, but it's probably better to just take the spiral section altogether here because there's just that many more rings as opposed to like a about a second time save. So we're now on lap two. Uh, as I go through this, I don't actually take the minecart section at all because I was just going for a high score. And... Uh, 
we're again just gonna try to u-turn through the spiral and as we go through the higher laps it does become pretty difficult to actually do that section as we maintain a higher blue fire speed the other thing that really really had me banging my head on this track is actually the section right after the spiral because you go on the right side of the pillars and then you go on the left side to get all of the rings you go one two and then there's four on the left side so if you miss the four on the left side you're really doomed but if you miss the two on the right side it really sucks as well but not as much as missing the four but in general, like I said, as we're going faster and faster, this whole track becomes a lot harder to really maintain your speed going through. This run itself, this is the first run that I did and actually ended up being, I think it's 52nd on the leaderboard. So that really kind of tells you a lot about how much people struggle with this track and how much people really want to play the ring rally of it. Uh, I think honestly though, this, the rings are set up in a pretty decent way. That crossover section after the, the spiral slash shortcut area really does kind of suck, but I get that it's being done for the challenge part of it rather than, you know, just being a dick move. If you guys are really interested in seeing this track done with blue fire kind of flawlessly, I actually did a series a couple months ago about doing all of the CTR tracks with the Super Turbo Pad cheat on, and it was just a single video. And I talked about this track in particular and Papu's Pyramid being the only tracks that I really struggled to maintain fire with. And ultimately they were the only tracks that I really ended up screwing up and wasn't able to get a completely clean run in of them. We're gonna kind of fast forward here and we're all the way to lap eight and you get to see how hard this track really gets at lap eight. How hard to control all this stuff is. You can't really fit in a power slide anywhere and the spiral becomes basically impossible to maintain fire through. And overall, if you bonk against the wall, you're really just kind of screwed and you're never going to hold fire ever again. <laughs> but other than that, I think this track's pretty all right for Ring Rally. It's just that it's a hard track in general. That's really all I got to say about the Ring Rally on this track. From here, we'll move on to the single race setting of this track and talk about how it plays out online. This is the part where I'm supposed to say, haha, just kidding, this track never gets picked online which is the truth, it doesn't. If this track ever gets picked online, pretty much guaranteed the lobby disbands and that's the end of the story. However, we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Again, I'm gonna be using footage from some of my speed runs instead because really all I'm talking about is the boxes. So again, there's the first set of boxes right there at the, that first right corner. We're gonna get a box and then we're gonna get another one right before the minecart crossover section. There isn't any boxes on the spiral section, so if you don't take the spiral, you aren't actually hurting yourself at all, unless you, well, can't make the minecart section yourself. So then we also have a fruit box coming out of the boost pad mineshaft area, and then another set of boxes if you so choose to actually take the, uh, the track instead of jumping through the coal. Now, let's talk a little bit about this track in general. I think this track is kind of a pain in the ass online mostly because if you have a group of really good people well expect that minecart section to be trapped all to hell and only the first person that gets through it is really going to be able to get through it until they drop an item and everybody's just screwed from there aside from that I think, again, they changed it recently, so if you fall off the minecart section, you do actually get dropped off back on the top of the spiral, so I think that helps out a little bit, but generally, definitely a pain in the ass online because of the items being able to block almost the entirety of the shortcut with the single item itself. So, in a sense, it's actually kind of snowball-y because, well... If the person gets out in front right at the beginning, they're going to stay there because they can just trap the shortcut and make it so nobody can ever actually catch them. On top of that, tracks that only have one boost pad on the whole thing tend to be kind of obnoxious online because if you do get itemed after that single boost pad, your race is basically over. And that definitely seems to be the case with this track as well, unless the person that's trying to front run just makes a mistake on their own. Chances are you'll never be able to catch them which can kind of be annoying. In general though, uh, I do want to say I actually really do like this track, at least for time trialing. In time trialing this track, the minecart cycles are a thing that are 
part of the track itself, but they push you to go faster and try to beat those cycles. And I think that's really cool as part of the track to basically say how much faster, how much cleaner do I have to make these lines if I want to be able to make this shortcut one more time and fit in before this uh, minecart comes through. And uh, I think that's really cool. It's definitely a way for you to want to push yourself further and further. As far as online goes, eh, not really my favorite. And as far as Ring Rally goes, uh, a little bit too challenging for my tastes. <laughs> so that's going to be the end of this episode. And I'm not entirely sure what track I'm going to do next. I might just do Polar Pass and I might do one of the Warp 4 tracks instead. So that might be uh, Engine Labs, Cortex Castle, Hot Air Skyway, or Oxide Station. I'm not quite sure. I know people were asking for a Blue Fire track, and I've kind of ruined my integrity of going through all of the tracks in order, so I might as well just do it. I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to do yet, but we will see each other when we get to it.